Let's start with your takeaways from the numbers that we saw, PMI, ISM. What did it really tell you and what stands out? All right, Nicole, thanks for having me. Um, so we saw the PMI manufacturing number come in at 60, just over 16.5% this year. I'm sorry, this month in June. Um, anything over 50 is signaling expansion. And this is actually the 13th month in a row that we've seen that. So we're definitely still in uh, expansionary territory. Um, and we think that really stands to benefit industrials and materials companies. We've actually already seen that so far this year with both of those sectors outperforming the S&P 500. Uh, and you think about, you know, why is that happening? Well, corporate profits are soaring, and that's really incentivizing a lot of these corporations to invest a lot of that money back into their infrastructure, um, increasing their capacity and upgrades. Um, and we're also seeing a big increase in business spending, up 30% so far this year. Yeah, so uh, you continue to see this expansion. You continue to see business spending, CapEx. Um, when we talk about infrastructure bill and the catalysts for groups, industrials, materials, are there names that jump out at you and why? Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned with the, the infrastructure bill, you know, the U.S. is talking about this massive, you know, one plus trillion dollar overhaul on the aging infrastructure in this country. Um, look at companies like Caterpillar and um, Deere and Company. They're both heavy, man big manufacturers of heavy machinery used in a lot of this construction equipment. Um, Deere and Company is also producing diesel engines and drivetrains for a lot of this heavy machinery. So I think that's going to be pretty vital to this whole overhaul of the infrastructure. And also even looking at what companies are doing to, to reshore some of the supply chain disruptions and bringing some of that really uh, vital manufacturing back home. Well, you talk about corporate profits um, and that they've obviously been soaring in 2021, at least in some cases. What does it mean? Why is that an important part of everything? Well, I mean, corporate profits, more, more money. Um, so they, they need to invest in their, their business moving forward so they can continue. Have they peaked? Money, right. And, sorry? Have they peaked? Um, I don't think that they've peaked, no. Um, because if you look at what's happening with, you know, the vaccination rollout in the U.S. and globally, um, we I think we still we still stand to see a lot of growth moving forward. Um, so if you think about what is the situation moving forward, I mean, you see the semiconductor crunch, the trade war with China, COVID-19. I think moving forward, that's still going to really incentivize a lot of these companies and governments um, to really look at overhauling their infrastructure and really shoring up a lot of these supply chain disruptions, disruptions. I mean, we've all seen what's been happening with inflation and waiting forever to get materials and commodities prices are going through the roof. Um, so these companies are, are taking these profits and this revenue that they're getting and really looking at ways where they can shore that up and increase um, their capacity to fill these orders moving forward so they continue to, to increase their profits. What about manufacturing jobs? I mean, I know you I, you liked names. You mentioned Caterpillar and Deere and all of these are heavy machinery and equipment and industrials and great for infrastructure and building and all that. Um, you have Rockwell, AMAT, Oshkosh as some of your other names. Are these all names that you like and you'd invest in or just names to watch? Yeah, they're absolutely all names that I like and would invest in. Um, you know, our firm leans towards uh, index investing. So certainly would look at the industrial and material sector, um, but these are some of the biggest names in those areas that I really think stand to benefit. Uh, you talk about applied materials and Rockwell Automation. Um, they're really looking at, you know, you have Deere and Company and Caterpillar on the heavy machinery side. Well, we also need software, we need uh, automation, we need these materials to make these semiconductors, and that's really where, where they fit into to this, uh, the whole play. So what, what needs to happen here in the back half of the year? I mean, ideally, we'll start to get some jobs back. The pandemic obviously uh, really interfered with supply chain, right? And we've had a shortage of a lot of things. Manufacturing jobs, you think they're likely to come back? You think things are likely to pick up even more? I do. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about the unemployment benefits ending in September. Also, a lot of yeah. these schools getting back into session. I think we're going to have a lot of more people that are having childcare so they can get back to work. Um, hopefully, people aren't as concerned about the health risks of potentially going back to work. And ultimately, you know, we've already been seeing wage inflation. 
we're going to see that continue because the reality is, is there's just a lot of opportunities in the job market where people can either work from home or work less physically demanding jobs um, for the same or better pay. You know, a lot of these companies are going to have to start increasing their wages to bring bring these workers in. And uh, ultimately, I think that's going to get passed down to the consumer.